But yeah, that's enough about me blowing my own art, blowing smoke up my own ass. Let's get into some topics. So on the interwebs, on the interwebs. So um, let's get into something. What are we going to talk about here? Number one, the future of club culture. So this is a great video. I spoke about a little bit in the last podcast with Resident Advisor. Resident Advisor, Resident Advisor, my favorite place to go to. Some of the writing is a bit annoying. The fact that they close the comments is super stupid because, you know, some DJs were getting their feelings but hurt because fans like ourselves, you know, there's a group of, there's going to be fans out there that are just nice, supportive people that are going to come and support your show. There's going to be some fans out there that are dickheads too. It's a to and fro of it, right? That's what made Resident Advisor popular. That's what made it the place to go to because they had this great community community there obviously over the years the community or the online commentating space has kind of changed and shifted over the years so maybe they kind of felt a bit uncomfortable where it turned into but there are ways to go around kind of managing it for some way shape or form to completely close the comments is asinine because it doesn't stop people hyping up the djs that they want to hype up it doesn't stop people um i heard someone on boy room say recently her uh, business techno it doesn't stop business techno becoming bigger and people that have no right or talent to be on a particular stage do get promoted it doesn't stop janky promoters if anything it enables them because you remember back in the day actually right ra comments used to always get into promoters who were putting on a doing a shit job right how doing shit sound not hiring enough security not having i don't know water stations whatever it may be right the, the comments were always straight into that how badly organized uh, festivals were and i would like to think actually crank brother was probably a good example of it even though they probably won't agree i think crank brother used to get a lot of stick on the ra comments for the events for the sound all that sort of stuff right and over time they started to hone it and get better at it right and they started to really kind of get i think even london warehouse um what's it called london warehouse events whatever they used to be the ones as well they used to get quite a lot of stick because they used to be the ones that put in all the good nights like toy toy as well and um part of the reason why they they got to where they got to again they won't admit it possibly but the kind of amount of stick they used to get online used to really push them to kind of put on a better show because people were demanding refunds well that sort of stuff that's gonna come out of pocket and hurt so a lot of the things that are doing nowadays is a bit annoying but again i'm something that's taken more i like to kind of concentrate on the things that i get out of it Again, it's still the best place to get events listings. They still have some of the best reviews on there. Some of the event reviews are fucking amazing. They're written by people that actually love or are passionate about going out. And if you if you listen, watch, read any reviews on Pitchfork, which I rarely do, but if you do come across it, you will realize there are writers on there who have a very cynical point of view about things, right? They're quick to kind of rip into independent or up and coming artists and kind of tear them apart on their first album, which, you know, is fucking weird. But you get the feeling they don't really enjoy what the music industry has become, which is interesting. You know, there's a debate around that. But if you're going to review nowadays music, you just need to come into it. Just accept it for what it is, right? And review the stuff that you like or you don't like. But offer some kind of opinion, but don't come into it like hating everything, right? But RA, you get the feeling people actually enjoy music. They actually give, even the negative reviews, they give quite constructive kind of pointers and stuff. In general, I like the site. And part of the reason why I like it as well is RA is a resident advisor exchange. The kind of podcast they have where they sit down with people in the industry and they kind of shoot the shit. And they did like a, sort of like a, a live one um, um, at um, IMS, which is Ibiza, kind of like, you know, an uh, electronic kind of music conference thing that they do when Ibiza season popping off. You know, a lot of people in the industry kind of sit down and talk and shoot, shoot the shit, which is quite interesting. Um, they got really cool interview recently that I listened to with Loco Dice. No, Loco Dice, sorry. Um, is it Loco Dice? That's not Loco Dice. Luciano. Luciano's Lucy on Serba, which, you know, a lot of people didn't, weren't aware of. And he's kind of, you know, spoke very well about sobriety, about, you know, the perils of um, hedonistic lifestyle in the electronic music scene. Just a really solid interview. And you only get it from those advisors because people really respect their name and are willing to kind of sit down with them and kind of shoot the shit. So they did this amazing podcast recently, right, with a bunch of industry insider where they talk about the future of club culture and where it's kind of heading. Um, it's all really interesting. I didn't really put any time because of things that I like to listen to. So I would I sh- wish I should have done that going forward. But we'll play a little bit of it and then we'll kind of speak about some of the things I spoke about. And then there's a comment on here that I thought was really interesting that we also can speak about too. Um, this is kind of Will Lynch kind of introduced in the segment. Let me move. Really resonated. A value apart from. Let's see. London. Just, just echoing what Keith said earlier and what Andrew said there. Oh, okay. Let's go to the first bit. I think the first comment kind of from this, so basically they've got loads of industry people sitting down and talking about the comments, you know, about the future of club culture where it's heading. And I think this first comment kind of encapsulates most of the debate. I'm Andy Booker of Fabric, so. <laughs> um, yeah, but one of the things that I'm really worried about is that the, the, the ecosystem of club manager, venue, promoter is, is broken in the sense that the people that are taking one hundred percent of the risk are at the bottom of the food chain, and there's less money coming in. But year on year, artists want more and more money, 
and this is where it becomes impossible to book. Lineups I used to book four or five years ago cost me 25% more than they do now. So actually the level of lineups I can present for the money is less value to the customer. But the artists want more money. Ticket prices are at a maximum for our club. We feel the drinks prices are at a maximum. We feel there's nowhere to go. So it, what's the answer to that? I don't really know. I feel there needs to be a big reset in fees and ticket prices to get people back into, well, especially in London, to get people back into the clubs because footfall is going down. And the ticket prices, when I started going out, were 10, 15 pounds. They're now 25 pounds from most clubs. And if you talk to our friends here, next door, it's, you know, it's even more for, for print works, but it's a, it's a lot larger scale. How do we get there? I don't know, but that's one of the issues that really, really concerns me is, is the level of lineups we can put on or can't put on anymore. So that's an interesting point, right? I think that kind of encapsulates the whole issue that they have going on. This is kind of like from a booker from fabric. So it's a bit hard to, you know, maybe in terms of the whole general clubbing culture, it's hard to kind of maybe apply that kind of wisdom to every situation because, uh, you know, fabric is at the apex of the hill, right? They're kind of one of the top clubs. They've gone through what they've gone through with the local council, with the police, with drug abuse, with people dying um, on their premises due to kind of things. So they've, they've got a bit of a murky background, a bit hard to quantify. But again, they're at the apex. They're the top dogs in the scene. Um, I think what he's speaking about the issue um, here is that, from my opinion, again, got from being someone that goes out a lot, and I'm I, and I and I, you know, as Americans say, party, right? I party, I go out, I'm I'm out and about, I'm plugged in, I'm involved in the scene. I'm not kind of like a passive um, spectator. I'm actively involved in the things that are going on. I DJ, you know, amateurly on the side. I promote nights myself. Um, I design flyers. I'm on for I, you know, I'm I'm the kind of kid that would want to pay 25 quid to go see Ricardo and Lobos at Fabric, right? I will do that and also pay 10 pounds to go see a nobody at the Yard Theatre, right? Like, this is what I'm about. And I think the main issue for me, having come from the kind of heady days of the whole East London scene, is that basically, effectively, in my opinion, I think the local boroughs or local councils have effectively killed nightlife due to the kind of draconian licensing laws that they have in place at the moment. I think the moment clubs started to close earlier, and the moment, um, you know, um, late licenses were being denied left, right, and centers, and people couldn't put late license applications in. I think maybe in the beginning it might have been, let's say it was more than 10, now it's less than six, right? Applications you're putting through that the year, and they get denied all, all, all over the place, left, right, and center. The moment it got harder and harder and harder to just go to a regular nightclub and just have a good time, the moment we ran out of kind of plastic people type venues, right? 200 to 500 people, um, small venues that you could just kind of like book your kind of, you know, imagine, for instance, again, this is no shade to anyone. I don't know if she's got better or not got better. It's not that she's a bigger platform now at the moment, but I saw a Claire Fifi play at Fold, right? And she is the last person to play at the night. I think it might have been, I forgot who was playing. And the whole place was absolutely empty, right? She, no, everyone kind of left. Well, whenever the headliner played, a Claire Fifi came out at the end and everyone kind of emptied out. Now, that's not Eclair Fifi's fault, right? She's a fucking amazing DJ. The, it's the fault of the venue, maybe her booker, maybe put her on, but people that's not really, you know, I don't know, whatever, but it's more so the fact that there's not enough venues, there's not enough smaller kind of like plastic people type venues that Eclair Fifi can play on. Because imagine if Eclair if, if Fifi's playing back to back with, F, uh, no, FX Twins playing before and she's playing after, right? People will still hang around at, at plastic people and hear her play. But at Fold, everyone's just going to go home, right? Because it's a big club and, you know, you just, when everyone leaves, it looks like everyone's left, but it's not everyone. It's like there's still room there. There's still people in there dancing, but it looks like everyone's gone. So I think the fact that we don't have that many smaller scale clubs in that kind of realm has really hurt club culture because I think there's people out there who aren't like me, who aren't nerds and who aren't willing to go to limps that I go to, whether it's kind of following this in, this Facebook page that uploads... Pro, like, for instance, I bumped into this girl the other day at the, a white post who puts on these... Um, kind of party in a park festivals well part well raves in the park sort of kind of parties right similar to the keep on going sort of crew like there's a whole bunch of these italian french spanish dudes girls coming into london who are just fucking killing it on the promoting side right they kind of put all these really crazy random events in weird places uh and they're all kind of all kind of like hush hush word of mouth sort of stuff right so you got invited to a facebook page you got invited to this thing you got a texas number really cool and i bumped into the club and i got to know and then she sent me the thing amazing 
Um, but that's because I'm a nerd and I go out all the time. If you're a regular consumer, you just want to go to a club and have a good time, there's not that many options to go to, right? There's XOYO, there's P Printworks, there's all these kind of places, but they all require tickets. They're all kind of £25 and plus. They're not very spur at the moment. Venues, um, passive people in these kind of places are good because you could generally get into them for about £15, um, maybe less, right? Uh, Bar Bar is maybe a good example of that too. Those kind of like, you know, mid-sized venues. Alaba is a good example of that too. Um, but the moment the licensing laws came into place, they effectively killed all those smaller venues because they can't make any money during the day because no one's going to the alibi at 7 p.m., right? They're, you're going to go there between the hours of 12 and 4 or 12 and 6, right? Those are times you're going to go there. So they're struggling a lot. And the only place I think that isn't struggling really for the most part, and it's mostly because of the proximity, I just thought about it now, is Mix and The Yard, right? In Hackney Wick that I love to go to. And if you see them, they're both right next door to um how the howling taps place and um the crate brewery right and people stay there people are out at the crate on thursday to friday from like 4 p.m onwards right it's fucking ram jammer people love the crate they love hanging out around there so there's a group of people that like to go hang out around the crate who just kind of run the buy mix and see it open and be like you know fuck it let's just go have a good time here's some techno just go in right especially because it's priced around 10 20 pounds easy to go or the yard or simple but clubs that don't have that kind of a, that, that are a bit like maybe you know and we're in the worst place of town don't have that kind of advantage of having just good parts of traffic so i think it goes what you're saying is true the footfall is closing but mostly because of the licensing laws it doesn't really have to do with the bookings and stuff or the dj's asking for more money i don't think you can reverse back the clock i think now if anything with the advent of social media with the fact that there's a lot of female djs in the scene now a lot of younger djs in the scene now if anything like like myself right that's how i got into djing by seeing somebody else like look like me or somebody that i thought was my kind of vibe playing behind the decks it's only going to get more people involved and the more people that are involved, the more sponsors I want to get involved. I think the foot flow thing or the DJ money thing might have to correspond directly with the amount of people now that are more fans of DJs, right? There are groupies of, of DJs. There are people that have, D there's DJs that have fan pages that are no, not tied to them at all, right? Big up to Arms of Dixon, one of my favorites out there. But DJing is big now, right? DJs are big are pop stars in their own kind of right, right? You look at people like a DJ Snake and shit, right? Like he sells out venues like that, right? These are big business, regardless if you're independent, regardless you're underground or commercial. So I think that these DJs now command an audience. They command big fees, right? Um, artists are willing, are willing to pay them because you know you're going to get out the door. You're going to get a crazy bar spend. It goes hand in hand. So you can't really reverse that. I think the problem, again, as I'm saying, is that if you're on a Claire Fifi, where can you go? Like even Jasper James, those kind of dudes, right? He played an amazing kind of, he had a really good residency, which they sorted out for him in Phonics, or I think it's a while, wherever it was. That was a great idea, right? Even like a DJ High, let's say DJ High is a good example, right? From, um, originally from Ridley Road Market Bar. She kind of, you know, the, it, it, her origin story is that she kind of was dapping the dance over there. Some amazing booker happened to be passing by while she was playing and kind of signed her on. And then she kind of, you know, went completely um, over the top, over the hill and smashing it now and touring all over the world. Played with God the other day. Like, she's just an absolute killer DJ. Um, there's a lot of DJ highs in London. There's a lot of girls, guys in the UK playing week in, week out in random bars and bobs, random bars and bars and pubs that you have no idea about who are smashing it who don't have the ability to go to that next step because the next step again for myself like i'm, I'm playing at quite cool venues in london right um trendy little bars and clubs and places right around the around the scene but my next step should be like a mix in the yard right but there's only two of them that i know of right there's not many others um there might be the what's the night tales place in hackney but it's not it, there's not many of that level um the next level above that is straight above to flipping i don't know print works all that sort of malarkey right which is too much of a gap fold you need to be able to have that other venue just above the kind of bars and clubs that allow you to kind of play but those places don't open late enough right and then people don't want to go the general partners aren't willing to go to so i think the moment they change the licensing laws the moment licensing laws are a bit more relaxed and we can have more venues open until four right mix should be open until four all the time four or five every single night because that three three a.m most nights right it should be open until four a.m every single friday and saturday every single friday and saturday because that will then allow the promoters at mixed garage at the yard to put more DJs on that are like of that level just above, right? Like so, the Claire Fifties, the, 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 the Jasper James. I'm using them as example because the only ones that pop in my head sometimes. Because then that will allow you to cultivate the next DJ high. They will come out of that kind of spectrum as opposed to like you know booking the kind of quote unquote big name DJs who are also always going to sell, but then they should also be reserved for the big events. Like you know when you go see Dixon playing at Junction Two, right? That's special because this is Dixon at Junction Two. It, it, it's a festival. It invites fucking everyone, right? Right? doesn't matter color creed or whatever but that clubbing experience that kind of training rules you're going to get from kind of being able to kind of cultivate a crowd from people that know you that don't know you 
it's sort of similar to comedy clubs, right? There's an open mic scene, there are the established clubs, and then there's also kind of, you know, selling out the, you know, Madison Square Garden. There needs to be that middle ground. There needs to be three steps. It can't just go from like one to one to three. And I think that's what you see sometimes going on in the scene nowadays. And again, the three things, I don't think it's that big of a deal because I think, you know, if you put on a good night and then maybe they smashes it, you're going to smash it regardless. But yeah, so again, this is a good debate. I recommend you check it out. That's the one point I'm going to speak about. The rest of it, I think it's best you just kind of check out for yourself. But it's a really amazing podcast, a really amazing episode. It's episode number 466 um, um, from Resident Advisor. It's called Where Is Club Culture Headed To? A really amazing series. I rec- recommend you check it out. Again, Resident Advisor has got a lot of stick over the years. But in general, I still think it's one of my go-to places for all electronic music news. I kind of go there and then go to other places. I found other websites, such as Electronic Beats, through Resident Advisor. Do you know what I mean? They allow me to kind of plug into stuff. So we recommend you check it out. Really cool series there. And loads of really good, interesting points that I'm sure you guys will dig.